All right, welcome back. Hope you're having a good day. This is a uh, Ficus Microcarpa, sold to me as a Green Island. It's a clump of probably four or five cuttings that were put together several years back, I'm sure. I've only had it for a few years. I do have several videos of this guy. Earlier videos, if you care to go back and check out any of the early history on it or anything like that. I'm just going to work it today instead of including any old pictures or anything. I have several in several of the old videos actually. But back in, uh, this is the front, and then therefore this would be the back. One of the videos I did was in October, and I pruned and wired it, and then I came back in December and just kind of did a prune around the wire, just kind of getting some of the bigger shoots, kind of like I've got now coming off of it or whatever, and left the wire on there. As I kind of went back and checked the old videos, I was actually under the impression that I might have wired it in December. But then I did, you know, I just a few days ago realized that that was in fact October. Kind of took a closer look. It's about time to clean up. I would like to maybe plan on repotting it as it recovers. So like I said, I'll be pruning it all the way back, defoliating the entire thing, taking every bit of wire off and everything. I'd like to play around with maybe giving you some close-ups here and there. All right, so sometimes even when I go in here, Sometimes I'm unsure on whether or not I really plan on doing a time lapse, trying to narrate my through my way through some of this stuff. But as I go through, I will be I think as I do each section, I'll go ahead, defoliate, take the wire off. So that is that one stump that comes up this way, out of the clump. Go ahead and remove all that wire before I go in. All right, so there that section is all done with the wire off. I also hit that scar just a bit with the Dremel. And go ahead. Right, and that should give us something to start rolling over there. And let's go ahead and now work our way. You can probably see here that's another stump here coming up. I have this one clump that's a long learning shoot there, so I'm gonna take that off. Down here, this thing actually has some of the longer shoots that came out. I'd like to keep. Sometimes when you defoliate these, they'll just turn black and kind of fall off so since there's like two or three of little shoots like that that I'd like to keep I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of them and then whichever one lives will indeed just be the keeper and now I actually can see that a couple of longer shoots are actually kind of kind of shot out there in place of a branch that kind of died back a bit. All right, 
and I was trying to give you guys a little bit of a better view of that portion there, but it unfortunately was giving the rest of the greenery over there for a backdrop, so you guys probably couldn't see it all that well. I may edit a lot of that out. Coming straight down. and that's pretty much that stump. I'll get that wire off. All right, and so there's the wire off that little comb there. There is a, there is a wound on the top that's healing rather slowly, but there's a scar there. It's actually a little bit, I think I was leaving a branch there at one point for that aerial root there, and then as I gave up on the branch, I gave up on the aerial root, but it's just got a kind of a little fat knob hanging out there. Right, and then I think I'm gonna leave that one alone. Well, I don't know if you guys, how well you guys can see, it really wasn't doing any rolling over at all. But now some of that bark is actually kind of flexible right around there. So maybe they'll kind of start healing a little bit better without any more human help there. I'll let that one just kind of figure itself out for a little bit. All right, I thought about doing up top first and clean over the background, but I decided to come down to this lower scar first. There's a branch coming out. Uh, you'll be able to see it as soon as I prune a little bit more. Let's see, we'll take that long one long off the one there. Big scar there. I did try to work it pretty hard before I had what I'm considering to be the best dermal bit I've been able to find yet. But before I work that, I'm going to take that wire off. I've left these two branches. I got this one here and this one here. Just trying to trying to see if I can get the life to pull that scar closed. And it's working a little, it's a big scar, and those are small branches, so it's gonna take a little time. But I'm gonna take some. And that lower side is healing up a little bit better than I thought it was. And actually, before I go moving up, there's one little just kind of lone branch here coming out. Trim that guy up. All right, and then this clump here is actually two fused together trunks where most of the energy is going, although there was quite a bit going to that one I just got done with, the bigger one that I got done with, not the little scar, scar one down there.
that really should do that one some good. Lots of stuff there to roll over this this part because so much energy is coming out to these branches here. Already healing a bit. All right, and that one gave us a real awkward angle. And it's going to be an awkward angle to try to get in there. I think I can take some of these. Some of these wounds that I have are just in real funky places, and I was trying to save an aerial root next to them or anything. This one here is just been an awkward place to get. And that should help tremendously there. Well, I say always been, it's almost like the, the wound on the other side here. This one is not connected to an aerial root or anything. Just always been a little gash there. Trying to keep that relatively small because I don't really have anything to get a hold of with the knob cutters there or anything. But I did kind of cut a little groove in there, hoping to get the water to drain out that way. So that doesn't become any kind of little source for rot. And then there's this one, and I got one more that thank goodness is on the back side too. This one's actually on the front. So let's see what we can do with that. All right, and then that guy there, I've been really hoping it would pop a branch out of the bottom. Never did. And so, I think when I do this, should, this branch is pretty strong growing here, so that should continue to heal over there. And then down here, either it'll pop a new branch or that should just give it some rolling power there since I opened up the wound a little bit more. It's almost all the way down to the base. In the other video, I talk about how when I go to repot it, I may try to remove that. But it does seem to be fused in there. But if it's fused in live, I'm a little confused as to why it won't pop a live branch or anything out of there. I mean, like I said, it's on the back of the tree. But it is a big ugly stump there. Let's see. little strange situation there in that as I tried to work the knob cutters there that's all live and then up here seems to be more dead all right I think that's all I'm gonna do with it for the day I think it's looking pretty good sometimes you know I don't want to sound weird or anything but I just kind of go with the feel of the tree I kind of kind of feel like it like to just grow a little bit without wire so that's what I'll do, and I may actually even just kind of give that a chance to uh, do that after I repot it as well. But there's the back side. And again, every now and again, I do think there's some other interesting angles that could be considered. I mean, when it's in a round pot like this, it is easy to just kind of go ahead and move it around but again here it's at its widest and that's what I've been thinking all along but we'll see what the future brings